Hi and welcome back. If you're new to the channel, my name is Vince. Thanks for stopping by. You're very welcome here indeed. So another set of results have been published from the latest human NMN trial, this time from a cohort in India. Enough waffling off me, let's jump into the presentation and let's see what this latest human NMN trial has got to offer. This is a review of a piece I read that was penned by Steve Hill, where he covers the latest NMN human trial, the results of which were published in the journal Frontiers and Aging. The study was a randomized, multi-center, double-blind, placebo-controlled, parallel design clinical trial. And there are links in the description below to the studies and the articles I used to put this presentation together. As you may know, NMN, or nicotinamide mononucleotide, is the precursor of nicotinamide adenine dinucleotide, or NAD, a molecule that may be useful in slowing down some aspects of aging. NAD serves many critical functions in our cells, such as electron transport, cell signaling, facilitating cellular energy production, and DNA repair. As we age, our NAD levels naturally decline, increasing our risk of developing age-related diseases. That's why some researchers are looking into restoring NAD levels in older people to help slow down aging and the onset of age-related diseases. The goal of this latest human NMN study was to determine if NMN had any influence on aging in humans. NAD serum levels were chosen as the primary endpoint and its increase, if seen, would be an indication of anti-aging. One of NAD's roles is to help produce ATP, which is a universal form of cellular energy. So the researchers chose the six minute walking test as a secondary endpoint. The researchers believe that NMN would improve energy levels and thus the walking capacity of the participants. To assess improvements in general well-being, the SF36 questionnaire was used, in which the cohort had to answer 36 questions related to energy, emotions, social activities and physical health. The study involved 66 healthy adults aged between 40 and 65, and it's worth noting that a total of 70 potential subjects were actually screened out. The subjects were determined to be healthy by assessing their vital signs. They had a physical examination and a medical history, including medications and several laboratory tests, including hematology and clinical chemistry. They had an ECG and an X-ray during the screening. The study did not include people with atherosclerotic or cardiopulmonary disease, a history of drug or alcohol abuse, an unstable mental illness that could impact the participants' ability to comply with the study, as well as those that used statins or pregnant or lactating women. Let's take a look at the doses. The participants were given two 150 milligram capsules per day, and these were taken after breakfast. 31 were given NMN, and that's 13 males and 18 females, and 35 were given a placebo in the form of starch powder, and that was 15 males and 16 females. This was taken, as I said, once a day following breakfast for a period of 60 days. So in all, a 300 milligram dose of NMN, which in my humble opinion, taking into account previous trials, seems a little bit on the small side. Let's take a look at the NAD levels. The primary efficacy parameter, NAD plus NADH levels in the serum had increased by 11.3% in the NMN group at day 30, whereas no change at all was observed in the placebo group. At the end of the study, day 60, the NAD plus NADH levels were increased further by 38% from baseline in the NMN group compared to 143 in the placebo group. Now, although the difference between the active and placebo groups is not statistically significant, the results indicate that the NMN did increase NAD levels in the serum after two months. And remember, this was only a 300 milligram dose. These results suggest that the NMN is entering the cells 
to increase energy levels and this could be interpreted as an anti-aging effect albeit relatively small in this case that said the NAD levels also increased in the placebo group which were not taking NMN which in my humble opinion does warrant further investigation the homeostatic model assessment of insulin resistance HOMA IR shows how much insulin your pancreas needs to regulate blood sugar levels at the end of the study the mean HOMA IR index showed a rise of 0.6 percent for the NMN group and 30.6 percent in the placebo group the HOMA score rose in the placebo group only given starch powder while there was little change in the NMN group the researchers suggest that this demonstrates an age slowing effect and that without the NMN HOMA became worse more on the researchers and their possible bias later let's take a look at the six minute walking test the walking endurance increased by 4.3 percent in the NMN group and by 3.9 percent in the placebo group at day 30 so no discernible difference was seen at day 30 when the same treatment was continued up to day 60 the NMN group showed a rise of 6.5 percent whereas the placebo group remained the same at 3.9 percent now although this is a small increase it will be interesting to see if the gap between the placebo group and the NMN group continue to increase with longer term use and if a higher dose would also have increased the gap the analysis of data obtained in this study did not find any statistically significant changes in efficacy outcomes between the NMN and the placebo group however the increase in NAD plus NADH serum levels the improvement in overall health and walking endurance are clinically significant the SF36 questionnaire reflects the overall well-being of the subjects the higher the score the better the health of the subject on day 30 the NMN group score was 4% whereas the placebo group only went up to 3.7% that said no meaningful difference in the score at day 30 at day 60 the NMN group showed a rise to 6.5% whereas the placebo group only raised to 3.4% the difference in the SF36 scores between the active and the placebo group was not deemed statistically significant but the increase in scores in the NMN group was almost double the increase seen in the placebo group two patients had adverse events in the form of dyslipidemia one of which was in the NMN group and the other was in the placebo group dyslipidemia is an abnormal amount of lipids in the blood both the subjects had mild cases and they were completely resolved by administering medication the adverse events profile stated that 3.2 percent of cases among both groups had adverse events which was the same amongst both groups and the severity of the events in both cases was classed as mild let's now talk about the limitations the trial was conducted by an employee of Effifarm an NMN production company who also supplied the NMN for the trial whilst this does not necessarily mean that the data and their interpretation of it should be discounted it should certainly be considered when evaluating the results two other factors to consider are the size of the trial in that it was only 66 people which is quite small the larger the trial the less prone the results are to statistical noise and the more reliable that they tend to be and also the size of the dose it may be more worthwhile to have had two or three NMN groups taking say 300 600 and a thousand milligrams a day so what of the future this study does suggest that NMN has potential in humans although a longer study and an increased dosage should really be considered and another area to be investigated in the future would be why the placebo group also saw an increase in their NAD levels well I hope you found that interesting or informative hopefully both I've made some observations I think that the increase in NAD levels in uh, the blood serum and also the increase in physical activity showed some very promising results uh, I'd like to have seen the study go on for longer maybe six months or even a year and also use larger doses maybe up to 600 or even a thousand milligrams a day
Now, I'm sure that the skeptics of NMN, and we all know who they are, will be all over this, hanging their hat on the fact that FFM and an employee of FFM conducted the trials. That said, the trial results don't seem to be vastly different to any of the other trials that have been conducted using NMN. I'd like to see your comments below. What do you think about this self-licking lollipop type of trial? As I've said in the past, it's not a competition, but there seems to be a distinct lack of trials in nicotinamide riboside. And there's no reason that companies that produce NR couldn't conduct a similar study like this. I'm wondering why they haven't started to do it to show that NR is as good, if not better, as they say it is, than NMN. That's it for today. I hope you enjoyed the video. I look forward to reading your comments. I look forward to seeing you in the next video. As always, please take care, stay safe, and I'll see you soon. Bye for now.